So we're going to go over computing the square. Um, we went over it last week, but you know, the teacher has a bit of a different method. So we'll compare the two styles. Um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be changing this standard form, which we have x squared minus 5x plus 6 is equal to 0. And what they're doing is they're changing it into our vertex form. And then solving for the vertex down here. So um, we have our standard form. We know that we're in standard form right now. So this is what we're left with looking at. And we essentially, we got to change it into our vertex form at this point here. Okay, so that's our goal. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this down the middle. So it'll be a little crowded, but um, we should be able to do it. I'm going to compare the two methods. So with our method, we have x squared minus 5x plus, plus, one? Yes. plus 6 is equal to 0. And uh, they started off with the exact same ones. So our method will try to keep on the left. And we'll usually draw a line down the side to uh, solve for negative 1. So we'll have to come do that again. Okay, so with our method, the first thing we did was divide the first two terms by the a term in our standard form, essentially whatever uh, coefficients in front of x squared. What coefficient is it technically in front of us right now? 1. Okay, so we would technically divide both of these by 1. Is it really going to change anything? No, what we're going to end up with now 0 is equal to a 1 x squared minus 5x plus 6. So all we did is divide the first two terms. What they chose to do is a similar type of separation. Okay, I'm going to highlight just so you see the similarity here. Um, what you're, what the teacher's done is actually move the constant term to the other side of the equation so that we're left with x squared minus 5x is equal to negative 6. So if you look in terms of similarity, the highlighted parts, they're both isolated. Yeah. So it's done the same idea, we just kept it on one side. That's a, well, actually not a bad way to explain it actually, is to uh, throw it to the right there. Okay. Um, next step, what we would do is we take the B term in ours. Yeah. We take our B term here, we call this our B term, and we put it into an equation, which we have here, B divided by 2 squared. Okay. Um, It'll be a bit crowded, but this will be our side here. We take that 5, and we're dividing it by 2 and squaring it, as it goes in that form. Okay? Now, when we divide by 2, we're going to get 2.5, but it looks like your teacher preferred to use fraction, so we're going to keep it in fraction form. We're not going to simplify the fraction, but we are going to square it. And what will happen is we're going to get 5 times 2 multiplied by 5 times 2. Okay? So multiplying fractions, we multiply the tops by each other and the bottoms by each other. So 5 times 5 gives us the 25, and the 2 by 2 gives us the 4. So the term we're going to be putting, adding, and subtracting in these brackets is 25 divided by 4. She's done the exact same thing precisely. So in fact, I'm not actually going to do it on the, as a side note here because they do the exact same thing. They take this term, and what we'll do is we'll put a little arrow to it, okay? And they do the exact same thing. So both methods use this. This is very important. This is how we create the perfect square triangle. We have to do this in order to, to get up to what we're doing. So on our side in the left, what we continuously did is we're going to keep that 1 on the outside because technically it is our a term. Okay? We did x squared, and we have to squish it in there, 5x. And we added and subtracted our fraction. Okay? So we're going to add 25 over 4. We'll subtract 25 over 4. And then what we're left with is plus 6 is equal to 0. Okay, Does that make sense so far? What they did, still, same similarities. I'll highlight it again. Okay. I want you to notice that their left side of the equation looks exactly like ours. Okay, well, I guess I don't have to do that really quick. Don't worry about that. What they've done is they have their x squared minus 5x, and they add... 25 over 4, and they subtract 25 over 4. So 
is equal to negative 6, okay? Exact same thing, okay? The only difference is with our method, we were kind of working in a bracket where they've just left that as the left side of the equation, okay? Still the exact same methods, only difference is the constant for us is still on this side while they put the constant over here, okay? Um, now from there, in both our methods, we move our negative 25 over 4. In ours, we move it outside the brackets. And we know when we do that, we have to multiply by our A term. So we multiply by 1, right? It doesn't really change anything. And theirs, they're moving it to the other side of the equation. Still going to end up with the same type of thing on the left side. So we end up with our 1, x squared minus 5x plus 25 over 4. Outside the brackets, they have negative 25 over 4 plus 6 equals 0. Okay, a little pound in there. And this one, same idea, they have x squared minus 5x plus 25 over 4. And on the other side of the equation, now this changes. When it goes to the other side, it becomes plus 25 or positive 25 over 4 minus 6. Now I want you to see the similarities here. Now, in this equation, both of the constants are on the right side. So this is a positive and that's a negative. Because ours are both on the left side, our 6 is actually positive and our fraction is negative. Still going to end up with the same stuff. Okay? So the similarities are still there. Um, maybe what we'll do is we'll just highlight these two terms because they're important in here. Okay? So it's the key part of that. Okay? Those are still, they're just opposite of each other. So we have that now. Um, we're going to simplify our terms. Now, because we have fractions, we'll go to the next page here. We're going to have to make 6 um, have a denominator of 4, essentially. So we have 25, or in one case, we have negative 25 over 4 plus 6. And in the other case, we have 25 over 4 minus 6, right? In order to add and subtract fractions, what do we have to do? Yeah, and how would I go about doing that? So what is 6 technically over right now? 1, that's right. If it's over 0, it would be very different. It's technically over 1. What can I do to that second fraction to make sure it's able to add to the first one? Yeah, that's right. If we multiply it by 4, we're going to get a denominator that is a 4. So we'll multiply the bottom and the top by 4. And we do them both now. We're going to get negative 25 over 4, we put our equal sign on here just in case, uh, plus 24 over 4. Okay. And in this one, we have 25 over 4 minus 24 over 4. When we add and subtract fractions, the denominator stays the same. And in this case, we get negative a quarter, and in this case, we get positive a quarter. So minus 1 and positive. So we just got to put those on the relative sides of the equation when we simplify. So on our right side, we have a quarter. We have 1 times x squared minus 5 over x plus 25 over 4. Now here we had minus a quarter. That was the first one we got. Equals 0. And in this one, we have x squared minus 5x plus 25 over 4 is equal to positive a quarter. Makes sense because we are technically have these constants on opposite sides of the equation, right? There's an equal sign to its right and here are the equal signs to its left. That's why they're opposite right now. Okay? Now, both methods do the exact same thing here. So I'm going to go across the bottom. Well, actually, I'm, hopefully you still remember what we do from this point. Um, do you remember the fast way to factor this? Oh, okay, I see what you mean. You're close. You're close. What we're going to do, this one thing we did miss when we said it, is we've got to square root the first, and we have to square root the last term, right? They're doing the exact same thing over here. These methods are going to both be the same, okay? So, um, 
when we do that, we'll have our one bracket. Um, actually, you know what I'm going to do? Just because I lined it, I'm going to end it. Let me move this down a little. Okay. So our next line reads one. What is the square root of x squared? Okay. So we're going to do it on both of them, right? Square root of x squared is x. Now here's the tough one, 25. Yeah, good. Square root of that is equal to 5 over 2. So, our first term inside the brackets is the x. Our second term is the 5 over 2. What sign do I bring down? Yeah, because it's a negative sign, we bring that negative down. So we have negative. What to the, what exponent should this be to? squared minus square root times square root. Okay. Same thing over here. They're going to get um, x minus 5 over 2 squared is equal to no, a quarter. Okay. So we've done the same method. Both of us have done the same thing here. Now this is where theirs differs a little. Because we have technically already found vertex form in ours. We're in vertex form. We can write the vertex right out here. Vertex is what? So negative 1 over 4. And what was the x value? Very close. Yeah, positive. Remember, it's the opposite of what's inside that bracket, right? So that's our x value and that's our y value. Now in there's, you could kind of deduce the vertex at this point. This is on the other side of the equation, so you can think of both being opposite. But it's not in vertex form, like we've created. We've created ours in vertex form. Okay. So we're actually done in our form because our main objective was to go to vertex form. What they've done on the right side is they've extended and solved for x. Now normally we would factor our equation to solve for x, but they want to show you how you can do it from here. And I'm going to show you on both ways how you could do it. Um, we're going to move this to another page just so we have some room, okay? So just so you saw those similarities, we'll go to another page. Okay, so we're on another page here. We're still on the left, our method. We are already in our vertex form. And we discovered our vertex was at 5 over 2 and negative a quarter. Okay. This one wasn't in vertex form, but the goal here is we need to solve for our x value. Now we can do it both ways. What they've done here... Her next step here is to get rid of the exponent. Okay, now this is where it's going to differ a little. This is algebra rules. She needs to get rid of the exponent, so she's going to square root both sides. We're trying to isolate x now. This is our goal, and we're going to whatever you do to one side, we have to do to the other. Okay, um, let's put that as our objective. And the objective. Now, we didn't really cover this the other day, but we can do it from where we are now. And to be all honest, the next step to solving x on our left side, I'll show you, is to move our quarter to the other side. So essentially creating what they have here. So we'll have 1 x minus 5 over 2 squared is equal to 1 over 4. And if you notice, we now have you know what, I'm going to get rid of those brackets just until we uh, can see the difference here. Yeah, I want to see. All it was was one step away in ours. So what we have now is, if you take a look, minus this one on the outside, which really doesn't affect it, we actually have the exact same equation they did at that step here. okay, We have the same equation because their goal was to solve for x. Our original goal was to just put it into vertex form so we knew the vertex. From vertex form we can solve from x and that's exactly what we're going to do now. In fact I don't need this such a big line because now that we have the exact same equation for both of these, because we have the exact same equation for both of these, we can now go from that equation. okay? All we were was one step away from having the exact same equation. Okay. So from there, let's solve this question. We have 1x minus 5 over 2 
is equal to a correlate. And like we said, we need to get rid of the exponent, right? Well, actually, we need to get rid of this one. Does this one actually affect this question at all? No, it's not affecting anything else. We don't need to put it in. We put it in for our vertex form so we knew what the A value was. But in terms of this question, it's not that important. So we're going to square root both sides of the equation. When we square root the left side of the equation, they're going to cancel each other out. The square root and the power of 2. Right? So we'll be left with just the bracket, or in other words, x minus 5 over 2. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. Square root of a quarter. Okay. Do you know what that would be? Yeah, exactly. Uh, square root of 1 is 1, and square root of 4 is 2. But, we've talked about this before. Technically, there are two answers. There's a positive answer and a negative answer. So what happens here is they haven't really written it out for you guys. Oh, yes, they have. They have a positive negative 1 over 2. From here, we're going to split this, just like we would in factoring. We're going to have two x-intercepts. We're going to have x minus 5 over 2 is equal to positive a half. And x minus 5 over 2 is equal to negative 1 half. From here, we can now solve our x values. I'll move the 5 over 2 over, so we get a half plus 5 over 2. And in this case, we get x is equal to negative 1 half plus 5 over 2. So our two x-intercepts, one of them is at 6 over 2, or 3. And the other one is at... 4 over 2, or 2. Okay. So what we've done is, in the first page, we put it into vertex form, and in the second page, we solve for x. From vertex form to solving is really not that far away. You notice how we would finished over here. We had finished over here. We had finished over there on the left side, and we just continued it. We don't actually have to go all the way back to standard form factor. We can work from vertex form and solve the question. Does that make sense?